So with this, I'm glad to hand over the podium, virtual podium that is, to a wonderful colleague of mine, a woman I can't say enough about. She is the consummate every woman uh, and a colleague here at Howard University, uh, Dr. Siha Majoub. Uh, Dr. Majoub is a medical doctor and serves as assistant professor here at Howard University. Uh, she attends um, on our infectious disease division. Of course, she teaches students. She runs her own research studies and she is playing an absolute instrumental role as our primary investigator on an ongoing trial for a new COVID vaccine. And so um, as lead physician for that study, I'm proud to present Dr. Siha Majoub and she will talk to you about how one shot can change the pandemic, the COVID-19 vaccine study. Dr. Maju. Good evening. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Williams, for the nice introduction. Um, it's uh, wonderful working with you as well. Um, it has been a great um, team at Howard. And it's my pleasure um, tonight to be um, the guest for the virtual um, DOTS community. So um, uh, like I said, you have heard about uh, the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine. Um, there is AstraZeneca in United Kingdom. It was, it's not approved yet in the US. And um, there is, um, um, so Novavax is kind of the fifth vaccine in the pipeline. So uh, Novavax is a phase three. So just remember what's phase three. Phase three, this is like we have thousands and thousands of uh, participants. So uh, we, are very, um, we are very fortunate to be the only site in um, uh, the District of Columbia and Virginia. Um, it's a clinical trial for the COVID-19 vaccine at Howard University. So, um, um, one of you or some people might say, I have never heard of Novavax as a company. Is it a new company? So uh, Novavax has been working on new vaccines for about 10 years. They focus on vaccines for older adults, more than children. Um, so this um, company is in Maryland. The current vaccine has also been tested in UK. Like I said, they're just finishing their trial in the United Kingdom, about uh, 15,000 uh, in the whole UK and um, South Africa and Australia. So this current study is being done in the US and Mexico. There are around 101 um, sites. And like we said, Howard University is one of those sites. So why be in a study if the vaccines are already available? Like, you know, this might be a question to all of you, like Pfizer vaccine ha has been emergency use authorized and Moderna and all the states, DC, including District of Columbia, are working very hard to uh, vaccinate uh, healthcare workers. Um, and um, now they have rolled that out to people who are 65 and older. So, uh, so why have more vaccines? Um, so we need to have enough safe and effective vaccines for all over around um, the world and the globe. Because just remember that uh, COVID just did not affect the US. It's affecting everywhere. As we speak, the cases are rising in the UK, in Europe, um, in the Middle East, it's like all over. So if we just do vaccines to vaccinate the people in the US, how about the people outside the US? Because now the world is like a village, you know, people come in and out. So everyone has to be vaccinated. We can't just be thinking about the US. We have to think about everyone. If people are eligible to get a vaccine now, they should not enroll in the study. And this is what we have been doing at Howard. We have been contacted by people who are 65 and older. So we're telling them your um, turn is coming very soon. Uh, so we don't want to enroll you in the study because if you get the chance to get the vaccine, the Pfizer or the Moderna, it's gonna be very difficult for you to continue in the study. So um, it's very important to have more vaccines now because uh, people in the community who are not healthcare workers, who are not first responders, who are not um, 65 and older, they might not be able to get the vaccine until March, April, or even maybe after. So this could be like a great chance for someone to be in the trial and get the study vaccine. So who should consider the study? 
So anyone who is age 18 through 55, uh, who may have to wait until April for a chance to get um, a vaccine. I had one of my patients today in the clinic, he's around, he's in his 50s, and he said he has been calling all over um, DC to get the vaccine. Um, so I explained to him about the study and he's very excited um, to um, enroll in the study. He was just very grateful that this is happening at Howard. So it made him happy, made me happy. So uh, frontline workers who are not being offered the vaccine by their employers, I know a lot of employers are now offering the vaccine. Um, for example, um, a lot of um, schools are offering that to their teachers because most of the governors want to um, reopen the school, so they want the teachers to be protected before they come back to school. Uh, gig workers, uh, private care workers, people who work in restaurants or um, do the, um, you know, um, live in crowded situations, work in crowded situations. Um, so all these people can be uh, candidates for the study. Um, younger female members with elders at home, because we all um, know that our elderly um, in the US or around the globe have been affected the most, have been the people who have uh, been in the ICU, still on ventilators, or you cannot find ventilators for them. So we want to protect our elderly. And the only way we can do this is if our young people get vaccinated, because um, remember that people can be carrying the, the, the virus and they can still transmit it to their elderly. So this worries uh, a lot of the scientists and the researchers. So you need to um, vaccinate the young people so they don't, um, so that, you know, um, because they're living with the, with the elderly people. So who cannot be in the study? Um, if you have uh, high blood pressure or diabetes, but your doctor tells you that your blood pressure is controlled, your diabetes is controlled, we can enroll you in the study. But if your blood pressure is not controlled, your diabetes is not controlled, it's really important that these people check with their primary care, make sure that they, these conditions have controlled before they get in the study. Um, if someone is currently getting medications that will um, affect your immune system, for example, cancer, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, but let's say there is, I always give the example of a breast cancer um, survivor. So if a woman is a breast cancer survivor, she had all her chemo, her mastectomy, and her oncologist um, tells her that everything is fine, she's not taking any therapy, she can be a candidate for the study. Um, unfortunately, if someone, I get a lot of calls about people who had COVID, these people, we cannot enroll them in the study. Whereas if the vaccine, if the Pfizer or Moderna becomes available to them, they can get the Pfizer or Moderna, but not our study vaccine, the Novavax. If um, someone had, if you, uh, they received the, the vaccine uh, in the past, in the past week. So for example, today also I had a, a patient who uh, needed the COVID vaccine and also needed the flu um, shot, but you know, he had received the flu shot before the COVID vaccine. So we are enrolling him in this. We are recruiting him for the study, but he has to wait a week before he can get um, the study vaccine. Um, so what happens in the study? So you will be uh, welcomed by our great staff in our clinical research unit on the fourth floor at Howard uh, University Hospital. Um, they will um, uh, take good care of you. They will provide you with an uh, informed consent. So consent, we can't do anything with the participants before signing the consent. And we give the participants enough time to read the consent, ask all the questions they want to ask about the, um, about the study. So um, um, they, they get um, a nasal swab and, uh, and blood test for COVID. They get health checks. They check their blood pressure, their heart rate, and their oxygenation. They get a short survey. And then, um, so there are two visits. They get the screening visit. And then the next visit, they get the injection, the COVID shot. So what happens in the study? So let's say three people um, show to our clinical research unit. So two out of the three will get the vaccine and then one out of the three gets the placebo. So what's the placebo? The placebo is just basically like a saline injection. Um, so this is, but um, the participant is blinded and the investigator and some of my nurses are also blinded, meaning that you don't know what you got. You don't know if you got the vaccine or the placebo. And that's very important for the study because we don't want any bias. Because let's say if I know the participant get, got the vaccine, then if the 
participant says anything, then right away I will think that, okay, because he got the vaccine and that's why we have to be blinded. Um, it's two shots, so um, 21 days apart, so th um, uh, three weeks apart. We follow these participants very closely for two years. So what happens in this study, the first month you come in, like I said, you, you're welcomed by the staff in the uh, clinical research unit, you get your first injection, and then after 21 days, you get your second injection. Um, then on the second month, there is a follow-up visit, so we can check on you and make sure everything is okay. In three to six uh, uh, months, um, there will be a, a follow-up uh, visit two to th three times. And then um, uh, the seventh month to the 24th month, there will be a follow-up visit uh, for uh, four, to six, uh, four to six times. So um, when, when you present the first time to the, our clinical research unit, we have uh, a, st a staff that will provide you with a device, kind of like a phone. Um, it's a, it, they, they will ask you if you have your phone, if you're able to download that app. Or if you don't have a smartphone, we will provide you with the, with the, with the phone or the device, which only works. It has specific, um, um, it can only work with this app. It, it doesn't do anything else except this app. And the reason is because we want to track the symptoms after you get the shot. If you get a fever, swelling around um, the, the area where you receive the shot, if you get any symptoms. So this um, tracker will, um, any information that you put in that tracker will appear on an electronic um, screen that uh, myself and my staff were following that very closely. And also we have a phone number. It directly, the Google number directly um, gets to my phone, my um, cell phone, and I call the uh, participants if they have any questions. So how will we know if the Novavax uh, vaccine is effective? Um, so after getting both doses, um, the people who got the active vaccine are less likely to get symptoms of COVID-19. So that's the question that we are asking with this, uh, with this study. Um, are these people less likely to be hospitalized or need treatments like ventilator? Um, do people who get the vaccine show um, high amounts of antibodies in their blood? Because the whole idea is uh, when you get the vaccine, we want to protect you. How will the vaccine protect you? By helping your body produce antibodies. So then just think about it is that this is your immune system is getting prepped and ready in case you get an infection, then your immune system is so well prepared that um, your immune system already had seen um, had seen that uh, part of the virus, so right away it will attack uh, the virus, and then you don't get um, um, severely sick or ill or be in the hospital. Next. So what the Novavax trial can add, we are adding people who have um, medical comorbidities. Like I said, we're adding people who have high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, but they have to be stable. Um, so this usually doesn't happen in a lot of trials. High risk exposure groups, like people who work the hard jobs, the construction workers, the people who do deliveries, the people who work in restaurants, the people who just work in condensed areas. And we are trying to increase participant diversity. Like this trial was, given to Howard so that we can enroll people of color, black, brown, Latino, minorities, because it's very, very important. If you want to know if a vaccine works in your um, race or ethnic background, you want to make sure these people are very well represented in that study. Uh, okay. So what's the project timeline? Like I, I said, we were, um, we were uh, started on December 28th and they gave us until um, February 8th for recruitment to call people to come in, sign up for the study, and they get their two injections. Between February and April, this data will be um, analyzed by the Food and Drug Administration. And then there's gonna be a long-term follow-up um, for, uh, for two years through 2022. So when will the placebo group get a real vaccine? So remember in that slide, I told you that three people come to the clinical research um, unit. Two will get the vaccine, one will get the placebo with just a saline injection. 
But then the great news is that the placebo group might at the end get also the real vaccine, which is really nice. Uh, but um, the, this is under the review of the FDA. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is still reviewing that amended protocol. And um, we, we, we think the decision is expected by, uh, by March. So uh, we, we have a, a mobile clinical trial unit, as you can see um, inside this unit, it looks exactly like a, um, a, a clinic. So um, there is a waiting area, there is an exam room, there is a sink, there is an area where they can draw blood. So we're very uh, fortunate to have that at Howard. As we speak, it's parking in our parking lot. And I just heard that um, tomorrow morning, we're gonna have that uh, unit right in front of um, Howard University Hospital. We're gonna do our first screening in the mobile unit. So um, the appointments are required. And uh, when scheduling your appointment, you may have the option to select a mobile location near you. We're trying to have this um, unit in the community, in different churches, uh, in their parking lots. The study visits also, like I said, take place at the Howard University Hospital in our clinical research unit. So to learn more about um, the clinical trial at Howard, please call 202. 865-7743-202-865-7743 and someone will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Also, you can go to www.coronaviruspreventionnetwork.org and when you get there, you should put, um, you can put the Howard site, which is how, which is H-O-W-U. And in, this is the flyer we're using in the hospital and giving away to uh, people. Uh, for example, I have uh, some of my patients who par are participating and they want to spread uh, the word to their family, friends and coworkers. So I'm giving them these flyers. So um, in the flyer, it's basically, uh, it lists for you who are trying to enroll, people who are 18 and older, people who have underlying medical conditions, people that you think have great chance of being exposed at the job, uh, people who live or work in an elderly care facility, uh, people who are uh, here we have in the flyer um, 65 and older, but then we didn't know that it's gonna be available, the Pfizer and Moderna is gonna be available for 65 and older. Uh, people who work in jail or in prisons, and of course, people of uh, racial and ethnic groups that have been impacted the most. So think about it is that all over the US and in other parts of the world is that the people who are minorities, people who are like me and you, people who are black, brown, Latino were hit hard. These were the people who um, were very sick in the ICU. These are the people who died. So the only way out of this is to is prevention because we all know that treatment is not great and the only way is a vaccine so that we can protect ourselves and others who we live with, work with can be protected as well.